Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, just a short uh, video on a C64 repair here. Um, there's a few things, obviously it's got a couple of CIAs missing as you can see at the moment here. It did come with a couple of CIAs. It, in theory should boot to a certain degree without any CIAs in there. I think if you've not got that one there you lose the cursor, the flashing cursor. The other one you might lose some of the characters of the display or something. It, I don't know. You'll certainly lose the keyboard and serial input and stuff like that and joystick. Um, the SID um, I've removed, it's got a pin missing actually. In fact, as it, I've taken it out and inspected it, it's got two pins missing. The, the very tip of one of the pins is missing, the very top edge. So uh, I'll show you that in another video because I'm going to do that as a separate. So I'll dremel the edge of it and um, stick it into a little pin, uh, stick pin headers and things underneath it. And yeah, it'll, you know, that'll, that'll be that. That'll be a separate video. But it will boot, the, these C64s will boot without a SID. Um, now I swap the VIC out just to rule it out. It's just the same black screen as I'll show you. Black screen, so I switch it off, switch it on. Now I might get some response because it's been on for a bit. There you go. After it's been on for a bit, you get these, you either get like a solid colour or flashing blocks or lines like that. Straight away, I was thinking, ah, PLA, I've seen this before um, many times, um, as you can see. And if I touch the PLA with my hand, ah, that's too hot to touch actually, I think, ah, yeah. So I'll just get the temperature uh, gauge thing and I'll just show you what temperature that's reading, hang on a sec. Yeah, so still switched on, still got crap on the display. Um, yeah, I guess it's not too hot to touch. I don't know, I have to move it around a bit. 38, oh, there you go, 40, 44, 49, 50. 50 degrees, jeez, that's hot. Yeah, that is almost too touch, uh, too hot to touch. Um, but you can see how inaccurate these things are with the laser. I mean, the laser's on the very tip. Uh, I'll show you, the very tip of the edge of them. Thing there to get, let's move it around a bit. Yeah, it's, it's very inaccurate, these laser dot things. Um, it's probably because of the, the distance, you've got to be a certain distance away. Um, but as you can see there, look at that 50, 51, 52, 53. Certainly up this point here. Um, ironically, the heat's actually here. Ah, so it's probably it's not very accurate, this thing. But um, I'm suspected the PLA with this. I think I'm going to socket this now. Um, the other PLA on it, I've got another board here with a PLA on it um, that's socketed that works. So I should just be able to just quickly swap that over, test it, just to rule it out. So just give me 10 minutes to remove this chip. There we go, I've got a turn pin socket on there now. A substitute PLA, that's the PLA I've removed. And uh, point you the screen, switch it on, black screen, then normal. So bear in mind the cursor's not there, you can see it's, uh, it's not flashing because we haven't got the CIAs in there, but that just goes to show you can back boot these without CIAs as a show. Um, no CIAs, no SID chip. So, you know, those are good things to do. I guess even if you get a black screen, you know, you could just remove them completely. If you've got no point frame of reference there, you don't know whether one of them's giving you a black screen or both of them might be faulty. Just remove them completely, remove the SID and see see what's going on from there really. But in this instance, it was the PLA and that ridiculous temperature was the clue. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.